Hello and welcome back to The Mischief. I'm Valen and I'm covering a four-part series on Overwatch based on the different subsections of heroes that you have to choose from in this selection here. Today we're going to be covering defense and in this we're going to be covering a little bit about each of the characters in this run in this uh, selection here their pluses minuses and how best to use them first up bastion bastion is a relatively easy character to play he has a machine gun he has a gatling gun uh, that he can actually transform into uh, he can also end up switching between his weapon configurations repair himself and in the end turn into a tank that launches missiles so to start off with, he looks very similar to Soldier 76, where small bursts will stay more accurate, and longer holding down will end up being less accurate over time. Now if you end up hitting your left shift ability, you'll turn into a giant Gatling gun, but you cannot move. I can rotate and change my uh, where I'm shooting, but I cannot actually move left or right in the process. But you can see how quick and effective you are. It is very strong. Though this can be countered, as before, there are many different ways that each hero can be countered. Specifically, one that comes to mind would be Ken uh, Genji's deflection. All I have to do to get back is left shift, and I'm back out of it. It is a relatively quick get-up motion. It's getting into it that takes a while. So feel free to uh, set up wherever it's best for you. Now if you start taking some damage, don't worry. You don't need any of these, you can just hit your E button. And you will start repairing your armor. Your character actually will start with some armor, which is very, very nice. Armor will actually def deflect uh, a percentage of the uh, damage that comes in. So I'm taking little bits of uh, damage on, the, uh, on my armor right now. Once that ends up getting destroyed, you see, each time I'm taking about 4 hit points of damage, then I'm taking a lot more. I'm taking about 8 to 10. Yeah, it's considerably more damage with each of those uh, hits. So that's something that you're going to want to keep in mind with these with this character, is that once his armor is down, he's very, very weak. Now with your E ability, you will actually end up healing all of your health. It will heal your health and your armor. The uh, armor is built into your character so you can heal it instead of uh, some kind of armor that's given to you by another character which will only be temporary. Now besides your left shift ability to turn into a turret and decimate your foes, you actually have the ability to turn into a mobile turret that shoots explosive shells. So you can actually turn into this very effective, you're shooting uh, faster rockets than Farah shoots and they're much more damaging than what she normally shoots as well. Uh, on top of that, you are mobile, which you are not normally when you're in your turret mode. And that's about it for him. It's very straightforward, you just basically shoot bad guys or turn into a turret, shoot bad guys or you use your ultimate to shoot bad guys. And if you get shot by your enemies, you end up using your repair. Simple and straightforward. Next up, Hanzo. Hanzo is one of my favorite characters. Uh, and not only because he is an archer, but he's also a sniper, and he just looks really cool. <laughs> that aside, he's got some really great abilities. Uh, he can actually uh, wall climb, similar to how Genji can. Uh, he has a bow as his main ability, so he's kind of a sniper with a bit of a uh, fall to the uh, ammunition that is being used. And he can also reveal targets with his sonic arrow, which comes up uh, every so often. It's actually uh, off of cooldown relatively often. Uh, then you've got your scatter arrow, which can help flush targets out from uh, hidden areas and your Dragon Strike, which is a fantastic ultimate that has to be seen to be believed. So with Hanzo, he essentially, if you see here, his reticule is a bit more uh, drop oriented. So if I'm shooting a far distance, watch the uh, arrow drop in this here. Actually, I will put the dot on this guy's head and he disappeared, but you'll see that when I shoot, the arrow actually kind of dropped down below that area. Not sure if you could actually see there. There we go. 
and I hit him actually pretty well. Your arrow will shoot relatively straight. It's very unlikely it's going to drop as much as the uh, bottom dot in that situation, but usually aiming just below that uh, dot is a good area to uh, try and hit your target. But you can see big hits, big misses. Aiming for the body, you'll do still a considerable amount of damage. And you do have your wind-up for uh, actually drawing the bow back. Uh, now, you do have other abilities, though. And this is where you actually become more useful for your team, for holding areas and letting them know what's going on in the battlefield. Your sh uh, left shift ability, which is kind of a uh, radar uh, arrow. Allow me to uh, shoot this over here. See that which is unseen. And you can now see that which is unseen, as he just uh, so eloquently put. Uh, this arrow actually will have a lot more drop to it because it's a heavier arrow. But you can see there, it actually gave like a little uh, transparent radar for us so that we knew where the bad guys were. We could then snipe a few shots in around corners knowing that they're already there. Now, if that goes off cooldown, see it comes back up relatively eyes. soon. And then you might be able to get like a shot in on some of these guys and only have to do little uh, snipey peeks around corners. Now on top of that, you might also end up wanting to use your E ability, which is a ricochet arrow, and it splits into multiples. So there are multiple bad guys in here, you shoot this, and it will ricochet around and do a bunch of damage. Really effective down small corridors or uh, tight-knit rooms for taking out uh, enemies. It doesn't do a lot of damage in comparison to your standard arrow bolt because that's just one shot to the head. Uh, whereas the E ability is more for flushing out enemies that are, as I said, in narrow corridors. But you can still use it for a straight-on damage as well. Now his ultimate, which is excellent. It is uh, one that goes through walls and is best used through walls so that the enemy doesn't see it coming because it is very, very slow. Now I'm going to shoot it and it actually takes a second or two for it to actually work. So you see there it turned into a dragon and then launched forward. And any enemies that were actually touched by the, the double dragons that went through took damage through that process. Something you should also keep in mind is that if you do just a very short damage shot to your enemy, it might do less damage. So just shooting quick arrow bursts like that may not be the best way to go when you can just do one good shot and take them out. So as you can see, there are two enemies here that will uh, respawn and one here. So if I end up aiming this and shoot, it poured through and shot these, uh, these guys here. Now, it swirled around, so there's a chance that it might miss guys completely, as well as they're going to hear this giant roar coming through and see giant dragon faces. But if it comes through a wall that you're backed up against, you're not going to see it coming. So this can be very, very helpful. Especially if you know where your enemies are. And of course, one of his other abilities, he cannot move very fast in a horizontal manner, but as far as vertical goes, uh, he can actually mount walls by just climbing them with kind of a double jump effect, similar to how uh, Genji would. Now, as far as Hanzo goes, with his left shift ability, and uh, the, which allows you to uh, see your enemies nearby, this will actually allow him to stay in places that he uh, normally might want to just snipe and move on, snipe and move on. Instead, if you can find the enemy with your uh, sonic arrow, you should be able to actually determine whether or not you need to move, or if you can stay and keep sniping. Keep in mind though, he's a defensive character. He's used very good for holding positions from a distance. If you end up uh, just sniping into an area and you're not helping to hold your point, you're not being a very helpful defensive character. You do, however, want to be able to take out targets, so you don't just want to be standing out in the open. You want to end up running and hiding, moving around as often as you can, getting some height if you have to, just so that you can get up into uh, difficult to see or normally difficult to uh, hit areas. Next up, Junkrat. 
Junkrat's got kind of a middle difficulty. Uh, there's a little bit of finesse to him, even though he uh, seems like he's not much of a finesse character. Uh, he essentially will drop bombs on his death is his passive ability, which is uh, sometimes frustrating as uh, you end up taking him out and he might take you back with him. Uh, but he does start with a grenade launcher, which is actually very, very limited range uh, and uh, it's very difficult to aim with. That's where I think most of his difficulty comes in. Plus the ability to uh, kind of combo the rest of his stuff, which is the steel trap concussion mine and his uh, rip tire. Now the steel trap is basically uh, you just throw out a giant bear trap and uh, trap an enemy. Concussion mine, you throw out a mine double to three times the range of the steel trap and you can end up blowing them up uh, by the press of a button. Of course, this one here, a remote control spike tire, you shoot into the midst of your enemies and explode in a very large area with a lot of damage. Now normally you would think He's not a very defensive sounding character if he starts with a grenade launcher. Well, he can help flush enemies out that are trying to attack. He can also end up setting up traps for enemies that may end up coming in through areas. So therefore setting traps is a more defensive ability, allowing you to then take them out because they're held still. As uh, tracers tend to run around quite a bit, that can be a very useful ability. Now combining that with something like, say, your mine abilities can really be a really good combination. Problem is the range that you have. Uh, this is about the range that I have for throwing out the uh, bear trap, and this is about the range I have for throwing out the uh, mine. So he's more of a close range type character, but he's all about the explosions, and he can hurt himself if he's... Uh, a little close enough there, you see there he uh, takes a bit of damage. Though I think it is a little bit reduced compared to uh, what he deals out. Now if he uh, combines his bear trap with his mines, you can see therefore he can just eliminate characters very quickly and easily as opposed to trying to hit them with his uh, grenade launcher which can sometimes bounce off at really awkward angles if you miss your target, especially if they're moving around. Now the good thing is, you can actually shoot into areas that you normally would not be able to uh, reach and bounce it around corners, which can really help contain your enemy and flush them out of uh, areas that they are trying to infiltrate in from, as well as drop a trap so that if they do come out that door that you are then flushing them out of, you are able to catch them in place and mine them and kill them. Now, besides all these wonderful, wonderful abilities that Junkrat gets, he also gets this Q ability, his ultimate, which you'll want to find a safe place in order to do it. You don't want to be out in the middle of the battlefield and then you launch this uh, unless you're absolutely desperate. But you become a tire and you then can run out here and detonate. And it causes a huge damage area. Thing is, your character will stay back where you were and your remote control exploding tire will then launch out onto the field. Now in case you're curious about how to actually detonate that mine that I showed you earlier, left shift to launch it and then just right click to activate it. This character adds a lot of variety to the uh, defense on a team, uh, essentially being able to, as I said before, flush targets out. You can just pepper targets if there is a uh, um, uh, an objective here and everybody's grouped up behind it. You can just launch a bunch of your grenades back there. Uh, you can end up tossing one of those out, throwing that, exploding characters. It, it can really end up doing quite a bit. A lot of uh, mayhem and chaos, which this character seems to specialize in. Next up, May. May is a rather difficult character because she can actually hurt her own uh, friendlies as well as uh, help them. Uh, also, she's a very short range character for the most part. She has her endothermic blaster, which has a short range freezing option uh, and a longer range icicle launcher, but it has a delay on when you end up shooting it. So it can be very difficult to actually time that so that you can hit your targets properly. Uh, she also has an ice wall option, which can really help divide or uh, control the battlefield considerably. Uh, a, a very poor May ice wall can actually end up killing your own team by splitting them up or walling them into an area where there's a bomb. Uh, also, it can work in the opposite manner and help contain the enemy and blow them up. 
Cryo Freeze, her ability to go invulnerable and heal for about 5 seconds. She can cancel it at will. And her Blizzard, which will, she'll throw out a little drone and in an area they'll cast a slowing freezing effect that will eventually freeze the enemy solid for a short time, causing damage at the same time. Now to show her abilities, you can see she has her freezing blaster, but she's not actually reaching these guys. You've got to be within a, a decent range to be able to hit them. And then even if you are, you see how long that actually took. Now the advantage though, is that she has a secondary shot. Now if I right click, she actually shoots an icicle spike, which is pretty damaging, especially when you're closer to a target. It's easier to hit them because you've got that delay before the icicle actually comes out. Now if you combine them so that you're freezing your target and then launch a, a headshot, you can take them out relatively easily. It's just a matter of getting close and not dying in the process. So you can see it's kind of a one-two combo with that. And often if you are uh, hiding around a moving target, like a, a large vehicle or something like that, you can actually uh, shoot underneath and freeze their feet and then come in behind them and give them a quick spike to the back of the head. Now she does have some control effects besides just freezing an enemy opponents and that is going to be her ice wall. If I press E, you'll see this uh, little effect on the screen here. And you can protect your friendlies. Uh, you can also wall in your foes. It can be used for many things. You can even use it on yourself. For instance, I can use it to jump back up here and I am now up above the battlefield. It doesn't last for very long, but it can also be used for bridges across gaps if you uh, are really well at uh, placing these things. Now let's say you're taking some damage, you need to heal up or take cover, or you just ended up overextending and you are right in the middle of it, you're worried, you just end up hitting left shift. You turn into an icicle and you heal at the same time. You can also cancel out of it and get back into the action quicker. And last, but definitely not least, is her ability to throw out an area of effect. Her super ability here, or her ultimate, freezes enemies for a long period of time, allowing you to take out an entire area. Really good at uh, getting enemies off of your uh, <laughs> defensive zone that you need to protect, or ending up uh, invading even. So she can be used for offense in that manner too. But a really good uh, May player can help control the enemy at every angle, block off doorways so that they, un they can't get through them, or just uh, throwing enemies into the sky, or dividing them in half so that they don't have a lot of firepower coming into one direction. You can also end up freezing them. It's just a lot of control that this character offers. It's not a high damage, but she has potential to do it, nonetheless. Next up, Torbjorn. He's about average difficulty. He's actually a relatively strong character. He's very low on mobility, as most of the uh, defensive characters are, but he has some special abilities to uh, be able to kind of go and protect multiple places as well as uh, create kind of a, a defensive battery. So he can collect scrap, which will allow him to gain resources to better build other items like armor packs that uh, he can drop on the ground and give to himself and others. He can also build a turret and upgrade it at least to level 2 through standard means. Uh, it's a level 1 by default. And this will lock on to all targets that are valid within range of it automatically and it will instantly just start shooting at them. Uh, you also have a rivet gun and a forge hammer that uh, you can alternate between. The rivet gun is rather slow to fire and it does have kind of a, an arcing uh, shot to it but it is very powerful. The forge hammer is actually a more powerful melee weapon but it can be used to upgrade your turret. Uh, and then on top of that you've got your molten core ability which increases your weapon speed, uh, you gain additional armor, uh, it also upgrades your turret to level 3 during that time that you have that active. It can be very, very strong. So automatically you have more options with this character, which is what ends up making him a little more challenging. Uh, the number 1 and 2 will allow you to switch between your rivet gun and your hammer, which uh, standard melee attacks will not do very much. Oh, that guy was already almost dead. Let me uh, show you on a fresh bot. So there you go, a regular melee attack. 
and if I have a hammer, it does considerably more. Not that I recommend you running around and hammering people to death because uh, you're not quite that durable of a character. Now if you press E, you'll, you'll throw out an armor pack that, if you haven't already picked one up yourself, can pick up and gain three units of armor. Now this is of course going to be uh, stronger against uh, weaker shots like, uh, um, like Tracer's bullets than it is against single shots like the uh, sniper rounds that do a lot of damage in a single burst. Uh, so with that though, you can end up building yourself a turret once you've accumulated some scrap. Now you notice that I can't put out any more uh, armor packs until I pick up some of those gears. Once I've done that, I can throw out more armor for the group. So often it's good to look for these power-ups as enemies are defeated and you tour around the map so that you can still keep on tossing out armor bonuses to your friendly group. This is of course what makes him a very good defensive character. But on top of that, you have your ability to create great things for you. a turret. Now you can actually place it down with this ghost here or you can cancel if you change your mind. But <laughs> placing it here, you create a level one turret which auto fires. As you can see, it's got a little uh, blue laser scope going on at the nearest enemy doesn't do a lot of damage, uh, but you can see it's doing some decent amount here, and it's better to have the extra damage that's auto turret. I mean, he was even shooting at that guy up there than none. Now, if you want, I recommend that you immediately try to upgrade him to a level two. And once he is level two, you end up seeing that he has 300 health instead of 150. He gets a second barrel and is much more effective at uh, destroying the enemy. Now, if I use my Q ability, I will end up turning it into a level three that will be even more effective. Plus my attack speed will end up increasing at the same time. Let me show you. So this is now a level three turret with 800 health instead of just the previous 300. And I have increased attack speed as well as uh, I can just be a beast because I end up uh, gaining some armor at the same time. So therefore you can be, uh, you can leave this to help defend an area, then you can go around and uh, create kind of a, uh, uh, a trap if you will. Sometimes you just want to shoot around corners and therefore you can stand hiding behind the wall, allowing your turret to just start taking out the enemy while you're repairing it. Be aware though, enemies are probably going to start using something with a blast radius so that you are included in that, instead of you just being able to get free shots at them while trying to heal your turret. The more you end up banging on it, the more you heal it up to its maximum health. Now of course anytime you're looking for more of that scrap on the field, it'll be highlighted by these little arrows on the ground and your turret should show up where it is as well. Don't forget, Torbjorn doesn't just have his rivet ability, but he also has a shotgun with the right click. Next up, Widowmaker. She's about average difficulty on this character, though I personally find her rather easy to use. Uh, but then again, I do love playing the sniper types. Uh, she is the sniper. Uh, she has this uh, Widow's Kiss rifle, which is excellent. Uh, it has an automatic mode, and then you can use it as a uh, sniper option as well. And it has two completely different functions. Uh, you have a Venom Mine that you can launch out only one at a time, and it will affect an area poisoning enemies that trigger it, and you have a grappling hook to allow you a lot of maneuverability with this character, whether it just be to move faster or to launch up and down surfaces. Uh, then of course you've got the most fantastic option to allow your team a big advantage, Infrasight, which allows you to uh, see everything about where the enemy is. So you can see here, she has her rifle, and if I use it with just a left click, I do some damage to the enemy rather slowly, but it it's better than uh, trying to snipe through a scope at uh, close range. Now, of course, if I end up doing short bursts with this, the accuracy will try to stay down, but it, 
It's really difficult. It's more along the lines of uh, Tracer's uh, shooting weapon in that case where it's just for trying to escape and uh, do some damage while you are uh, close range to somebody. Now if you do uh, to the head, of course it's much, much better, but ideally you want to use your sniper option and take them out one shot at a time. Now you'll notice the uh, reticule flashes right there. That means that you're at 100% power. So if I end up missing and then shooting multiple times before the power has charged, I won't do as much damage as I could if I waited for that to actually charge up. So you can see I at least got the shot in there, but it wasn't fully charged up. Fully charged shot should take out most targets with a single hit. Now on top of that she does have another ability and that is her poison mine. I press E and she launches it out. It will then go off and poison nearby enemies. And it will last for a certain amount of time and it's not bad. I mean you can just put it in little doorways. It's very small, difficult for people to see and uh, it can just help you to know if somebody is coming behind you if they set off your trap as well. Now on top of that, you have your mobility option. Left shift throws out a grappling hook, which allows you to scale distances with ease. On top of that, you can use it to just pull yourself along surfaces as well, like this here. You can just use it to move quickly if you need to, but in most cases you'll use it to just scale along rooftops or through narrow openings so that you can end up finding a good sniping spot to go to. Now her ultimate ability is the Q button and this allows her no one can hide to give visibility to any enemies to your entire team for the entire time that your recon visor is up and running. So you can actually end up planning and seeing enemies through walls and surfaces, allowing you to better plan your snipes so that you can uh, ambush or just avoid being ambushed. And as usual, remember, with sniping characters, it's best to try and seek some kind of uh, height advantage if possible. And to stay out of the uh, usual uh, range of fire of any nearby foes. But you're also going to want to make sure that you don't forget you need to capitalize on getting your defensive and offensive positions for your character or for your team. Don't just end up sitting back and sniping trying to get a kill count all the time because that's not necessarily going to help you as much as keeping them off of the spot that you need to protect. And that about does it for our uh, defensive character highlight reel so that you can end up uh, seeing what kind of abilities can help you and your team plus what you might be up against. Now remember, don't just sit and snipe everything with these characters. You want to make sure that you're taking up defensive positions, helping your team as best you can, especially if you're throwing out armor packs, giving them buffs, or even just controlling the enemy and which direction they're going. So until next time, folks, see ya.